Yo, 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 yo. Check it out. I'm gonna do this video from the top. I was actually making this video over on Facebook and it was not working for me the way that it was supposed to be working. So we're gonna get it together right now. Okay, um, this video is to talk about, you know, some of the topics that I've seen. Excuse me, some of the topics that I've seen here lately is all of this talk about evolution and, and really you have a lot of jokers trying to explain why their dogs look so much different and the American bully is changing and this really the sales pitch guys. So I'm going to tell you first and foremost, no breed evolves like this. No breed just changes and the whole damn breed changes in two days and you know you got bulldogs and this and that and the other. We have from the start had dogs that exemplified what the breed was and when the breed became more popular and started to get pushed it actually you know it was always something you know what i mean that uh that one way or the other was going to make uh on going to be the breed excuse me i'm getting distracted now i tell you this this is this is very very truth and uh this is very very truthful we had Remy, dogs like Remy. We had Paco, and this is around the time where the, the breed was starting. You know, uh, as far as the registration and all that, and the ABKC, and really pushing the breed as a breed. We had, uh, you know, Little Row. You had your Excaliburs, you know, your Pokemons, your Hallies. You know, Denzel came along a little bit later. You had a lot of great examples of what this breed was supposed to be, you know, stars, so to speak, uh, to lead the charge. And around, I would say, you know, the time of Dax, and I know people get upset when I talk about Dax, but the thing of it is, is that it's around that time span, it wasn't just him, you know, Miyagi came in around that time span, and several other dogs came in that obviously didn't look like what we knew to be American bullies. And a lot of it was because people wanted their dogs to be short. You, you went from bloodlines to where you seen dogs that were 100 pounds, 20 inches, all of a sudden shrink down to 14 inches. That doesn't happen unless you did something totally different. You know, Little Roe was shorter than Cairo, but people have to remember, Little Roe was still a 17-inch dog. Little Roe, who was technically, you know, I started the, the pocket movement dog. Little Roe was a, really a standard, you know? So what you had is a lot of people trying to trim the breed down and literally in one generation go from 20 inches, 100 pounds, all the way down to 14 inches, you know, 50, 60 pounds. And we know how they were doing it. But at this point in time, it should have been regulated then. DNA testing should have been put in then. We should have, you know, and, and, and to, ABKC and Dave Wilson's credit for a while that's what it was when Bullseye was presented boom they put a stop to him automatically banned him it wasn't a question later on you know uh, Miyagi when the issues came up with that it was a very very you know it was an integrity thing I guess you know and I, I was in the middle of that because we were trying you know I was helping them try to get the uh, DNA proved because one of my partners had Miyagi's brother or so-called brother and it was all agreed George turned the uh, DNA testing down, so it further showed that he had something to hide. Um, you know, during this uh, during the same uh, time when all this is going on, you know, Dave was me and Dave was uh, was cool, and I still don't wish, regardless of what people think, I don't wish nothing bad on Dave. I just wish Dave would have did a better job with this. But I, you know, people are what they are. You can't change that. Now, you know, I pushed. And, you know, and at this time, you know, like I say, Dave was leaning on me a lot and for ideas, you know what I mean? We were going back and forth about ideas, you know, he's a very intelligent dude and he knew it was something, you know, that needed to be done because the breed was getting away from him. And, um, you know, that was the, the idea to get rid of the extreme class. And, you know, and I, you know, I was the first one to tell Dave that has to go, man. It's making the breed look bad worldwide. He agreed. And that's the one thing that he did, you know, that that I uh, that I recommended that he definitely did. But the problem with the getting rid of the extreme class was this. I didn't mean just get rid of the class. And what Dave did is he got rid of the class, but he didn't get rid of the dogs. And what we had to remember, the class was part of the problem, but the dogs was the bigger problem. And without getting rid of the dogs and banning the dogs that didn't get in there, they all infiltrated the other, the, the, the well, what we call them in the TPKC is breeds. They call them classes over there. But you, what you had is you had the extreme dogs start to be bred into all of the other classes, whether it was the pocket class, the standard class. Around that time, if you go back, I say maybe eight years 
If you go back to that time, I say especially if you go back to like 08, dogs in the American bully community were not known for having weak rears. They were not known for having serious breathing issues. They were not known, and I'm talking about just going back to 08. You know, that's 11 years ago. They were not known for any of these issues that we see now. The American bully breed was not known for any of these. The American bully breed, believe it or not, 10 years ago, these dogs were not known for having uh, overheating problems, breathing problems. These dogs were at that time known for having very powerful uh, rear ends. And a high, a high rear and a bad top line was a very like... It was it was it was very rare and almost taboo. You see a dog like what was what's up with him? So when Dax, you know, and I and I keep saying Dax because Dax is the perfect example and and he's the most popular out of it. You know, when he infiltrated all of the other all of the other uh, classes, you know, whether it was Pocket and some Dax dogs are standard. I don't think it's any of his XLs, but maybe. You know, this dog is rumored to have, I've seen the paperwork where it said he had over 3,500 puppies. Other dogs that were like him had a lot of puppies because these breeders that fell into that era, they just breed, 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 breed. You probably talking about, you know, when you talk about kids and grandkids from these dogs, you probably talking about, you know, anywhere from, you know, 15 to 20,000 puppies. Easy, easy. And I'm talking about easy, easy, you know? And when in those genetics, you know, you put in the high rears, you put in the bad hips, you put in the breathing issues. So when people wonder how a breed can change so much from what they were, you know, just a little over 10 years ago to where the dogs are outside running in the heat, they known for being these big robust dogs that can breathe with their mouth shut, move good, do all these things, to a dog now that's almost like, you know, somewhat, uh, not being insensitive, but somewhat of a handicapped dog, that it has uh, limits on everything. This is what happened. The dogs that we agreed should never had a class, we allowed to infiltrate the rest of the breed. No, no extreme dogs were kicked out. None of the extreme dogs, no one said, you know what, these is extreme, we gotta get rid of them. No one said that. They just said, we're going to get rid of the extreme class because it's making us look bad. They were right. The extreme class made us look bad, but it wasn't just the class. It was the, the, the dogs were the substance of the class. Now we have extreme problems throughout the breed. You look at the pockets and the pockets are somewhat deformed now. You know, you look at the uh, a lot of the standard dogs and the standard dogs have these bad rears and bad feet. And you're seeing a whole lot more breathing issues like throughout the breed, even the bigger dogs are starting to die of these heart issues. Even in hindsight, after after finding out and figuring out that Dax himself had a lot of issue issues with the cardio system, there was never anything done to say, you know what, we have to start limiting this blood and find a way to, you know, or, or make, yeah, making limitations to even make the blood healthier. Like you can't do this so many times. It was, you know, any precautions to stop this breed from, um, you know, uh, from from moving forward, nothing, nothing was done to, to fix any of these problems, man. Y'all, excuse me, I get distracted when stuff pop up on the screen. But nothing was done to make this breed better. And now we have a thing to where it's an open debate because too many people have been made to believe that you can do anything that you want in the breed. And it's sad, but it's very, very true. Like people see people mix bulldogs in and they're never questioned. People see the guys come in with high rears and they stacking their dogs and twisting them and turning them to try to make, and they think that that's all good. It's never been any rules implemented at all. We know that it's obvious mixes and it's never been DNA testing in a breed that we have this as a, uh, as a problem. And we know why it's never been DNA testing because it would ruffle some feathers and it would cause a lot of issues, you know? And Honestly, the only way that we're ever going to get this back on, going back to the original part of this video, is that we know what the dog is supposed to look like. We know, and no, no one in this in this community is so stupid that they don't really know what the American bully is supposed to look like, and that they don't know what the confirmation is. This is why the breeders who have the more more extreme dogs, you see them in pictures twisting their dogs, pulling their dogs' legs back, or you'll never see the side shot of the dog at all. They know that that's wrong, but they're still breeding it. So now we have to go about enforcing these things and weeding these things out. And it took 10 years to uh, <coughs> bring the American bully breed to the point that it's a very tragic and ugly thing now. 
So what do you think is going to happen if we try to fix it? It's going to take at least 10 years. It's going to take, on our behalf, it's going to take a lot of getting rid of dogs. It's going to take a lot of pulling paperwork. It's going to take a lot of eliminating dogs that are not breedable dogs. This is the job of a registry. A registry should always be willing to pull papers, not off of vendettas, but pulling papers because we're protecting the breed. This is what this is all about. You know, it's, it's nothing more than, you know, uh, y'all probably heard the story, which is fake, but it's true. And when Dave uh, claims that he got escorted out of the UKC show, the, the fake part of it is that Dave wasn't there. But uh, Carlton Pratt and T-Lo, and I think it might have been Fabian, they got escorted out of a uh, out of a UKC show or asked to leave or whatever. But in, in reality, you know, they weren't doing anything wrong, but the UKC wasn't either because they were protecting the breed. It was obvious that our American bullies were not what they were breeding, you know what I mean? So they had to do the right thing to protect the American Pit Bull Terrier because we didn't have pit bulls, you know? These dogs were a lot bigger than those dogs and a lot more of everything than those dogs. So they, you know, in order to protect what they had, it was time to, for them to cut ties and then later on they come back with their own version of American Bully, which whatever. But, you know, we have to do a similar thing now in our own community. We have to protect the American bully. And part of that is going to, you're going to ruffle some feathers. You got people here who literally don't go to a day of work ever. Their whole livelihood depends off of the, the dogs that they have in the back and being able to convince that these dogs is, you know, five, ten thousand dollar puppies. So, of course, you're going to see some vengeance. You're going to see people get angry. You're going to see people talk crazy. But you got to remember, these are the same people who never had a problem selling an unhealthy dog to someone. And they never had a problem seeing their dogs die year after year after year. All they do is breed and make more. They never had a problem breeding puppies at six and eight months to make dogs. So, you know, we already know what they're about. And, um, uh, we know it's going to be a fight, but at the end of the day, we are willing to take that fight. But we have to erase all of those extreme class genes out of there, get back to our look. The American bully is not a bulldog. It's an American bully. It's not a pit bull. It's an American bully, a cheeky, chiseled head, wide, you know, the same head that they use for the show, uh, trophies. That look, we got to get that look back. We got to get that chiseled body back. We got to get these great cardio systems back, muscles everywhere, great conformation, thick rears. This is the only product that we can take to the world and say, we have arrived as a true breed we cannot take a product to the world that is beat up in every fashion the dog can't even breathe and we gonna we want to take that to Westminster the dog can't move correctly his ass is wobbling everywhere his, his back is, is sloped down you know you have to twist his feet and all this if you ever look at a real dog show those people don't have to keep touching their dogs over and over again their dogs are coming there and freestyle because the dog is what it is I don't have to contort your body because you're you're, you're a great specimen I don't have to play Houdini or play any magic trick because you're a beautiful animal and this is what we have to stick to people um i would like to tell y'all that it's going to be simple but it's not it's going to be a lot of hate y'all gonna see people talk crazy about me but as we eliminate dogs from the tbkc and as we continue to point out what dogs are wrong in this community and what is wrong as far as health goes and as far as structure goes it's not a thing to be evil or vindictive or to hurt anybody's feelings what it's about is strictly making sure that the American bully goes forward in a positive manner and we really, really start getting this breed together. You know, it, right now we are a worldwide joke. You know, you can't have 40 different looks. You can't promote bad health. You can't, you know, have situations where people are buying championships and people are going to shows and feel like they don't have a chance to win. If we feel that way inside of our own community, what's the rest of the world going to look at us as? People can see it as clear as day, you know. When you see somebody who's got a, a show win up there and the dog's back does one of these, people like everybody else is looking at that picture and they don't even have to know the backstory. They're like, how in the did that dog get a ribbon we have to stop that if we want to be taken serious our champions and our grand champions have to be the finest specimens in the breed period we have to set a level that these dogs are the real deal because everywhere else you go i don't care if you, you're talking about a giant schnauzer a poodle you know what i mean or whatever you do whatever you're talking about cocker spaniel when you go to their shows and you look at their champions and their grand champions they are fine specimens we're not, they're not putting a dog with twisted feet and a bad back and can't breathe up on the stand and talk about that this is a champion. We have to do better, y'all. But, um, you know, that's just my message today. There is no evolution. 
The only thing that has evolved is people's ability to cheat and people's ability to put on a blindfold because the breed should not be evolving. The breed should be, if anything else, you know what I mean, perfecting itself. Not changing, but perfecting. We should be tweaking and perfecting what we have in front of us, not trying to totally change. And these changes are why this breed is going downhill. But until next time, man, this is one of the longer ones. God bless all y'all. Much love. Peace.